Hi, it's Darren Butcher here from Darren's Desk and Wisebury Heritage Real Estate bringing you the Darren's Desk. So it's my, uh, I suppose, uh, take on how the market's actually going uh, for the January, February and we're entering the end of the month. So it's nice to have a bit of a chat. We're here with Rob Hilly. Thanks, Darren. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to you. Did he welcome me? Yep. And um, mate, we're already into February. Yep. Been a fast year, start to the year. How are we going at Wisebury? Yeah, mate, things are fantastic at the moment. Look, uh, the market's down. There's no question about that. But uh, statistics have come through. We've gone off realestate.com statistics for the start of the year. Um, 79 sales uh, for us. Um, the ne- next nearest competitor was 29. And the one after that's 26. So we're three times that third place. Um, a phenomenal um, result and uh, where everyone says, oh, we're the best and, you know, we've got this award and we've got this. Well, really, they don't have a lot when they're actually that far behind. To put that in perspective, you know, uh, before COVID, that period of COVID, um, is the market sitting how it was before COVID? Do you think like the amount of like sales we do per month at the moment or are we still behind? Look, it's an interesting one because I think what's happened is there's uh, the same amount of sales that are actually happening over the board on a general market. So I would call this a normal market, um, but it is a falling one, but it is a normal market. And uh, But I think what you're going to find is that the average person out there is actually seeing it uh, as very, very different. There's a lot more agents in the marketplace than what there was before COVID. Um, and so you're finding that, you know, there's a, a lot of little ones taking out little sales here, there and everywhere, which just brings the percentage back a little bit. But as a whole, it's um, it's a very good market that's out there. And, and look, I think you've got to be experienced to what it shows you, the 79 to 29 to 26, it shows you that some agents have lived this market and gone through it. We do really, really intense training with those who haven't been through it. So they actually know what they're experiencing and they know what, what they've got to do to put deals away. And, uh, you know, gone are the days where the agent doesn't answer the inquiries. I think uh, it's still happening out there, but um, it's starting to disappear a little bit because they just weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. And I'm not talking about our ones either. I'm talking about the competition. Yeah. Service has to kick in. Um, and how's the industry, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. they get punished. Well, it's the time when, yep. when it gets harder. People remember. Yep. How's the marketplace going? How are we seeing the property prices out there at the moment? What, are we starting to settle down? And I took a big gulp then because it's a, yeah. it's a hard thing to Love say. That but question. Look, we're, uh, we're 20 to 30% down in, in property prices, depending on which areas you are. And look, some areas are different. I read a, an article in a paper the other day that said that properties in Sydney haven't dropped in prices. And it was explaining the property was worth 1.1 to 1.2. And it sold, uh, you know, you know, because of competition and because people were paying over the top, they'd pay one three one four, and they said, well, now that now that property is probably getting nine fifty, but the market hasn't dropped. Well, um, you know, it's a bit of a wake up call, really, because if it was worth one point four and it sells for nine fifty now, the market has dropped. Yeah. It uh, and so what they were saying in real terms wasn't exactly right. I think it was the Sunday Telegraph, and uh, and I sat there and I went, well, you know what? That's a 34 percent drop. Um, that they're actually quoting there and, and uh, even though they're saying the market hasn't changed. If it was 1.4, it's 9.50, there's a change. And look, it, quite evidently out there in the marketplace at the moment, there is a change that's there, but it can be taken advantage of as well. Leads into the next question will be, where do you think the market's going to go? And I'm guessing the RBA is not helping anyone at the moment. Um, everyone's arguing over this inflation story. Um, you've been through many cycles. I don't see this as a typical cycle that we've been through in the past. Again, maybe to do with COVID, how quickly COVID, the house prices jumped and everything else. Yep. But what do you think, like with your, you know, you speak to a lot of experts in the industry and stuff. What are you feeling for the next of the year? Well, I first got a precursor to this. With it. I'm not a financial planner, nor never have been. Um, you know, I create my, my wealth through um, through property. And, and so the cycles that I look at is to do with um, with with how it helps the wealth of everyone around us, including family, friends, but also to our clients who some of them have been with us for 20, 30 years. And so, you know, the advice I give to people is based around what I can actually see and what I can feel. And sometimes it's not always what you see, but what you can feel in the marketplace. So to give you a little bit of a rundown, I think we've still got a fair bit of a drop to go. Um, I think that things like uh, interest rates, people coming off fixed terms of interest rates, cost of, um, you know, food, even at the shops, petrol prices, you know, just general living's gone up. Wages haven't gone up proportionally and they will at some stage have to go up and match that. But uh, but at this stage, it's not. And so there's this this concoction of 
things that are out in the marketplace. You know, if you go get a builder and you say, okay, well, I'm going to stay because my price has gone down a little bit, I'll get this built. It's going to cost you double what it would have two years ago. Um, and people go, oh, no, that's not right. We'll go and try to get a tradie to start off with. Mm. Um, and now they're starting to see that their long-term building contracts are starting to come back off. And so what you'll find is the builders will then start to drop prices a little bit, compete, but that's going to take time. So the, the truth is the market still has a bit to go. And I think what you've got to look at is if you were a seller at the moment, is it a good time? Well, if you know something's going down, and I always imagine a set of steps that going down a set of steps and we're on step one, we're now on step four, are we going to go down further? Well, yeah, the answer is yes. So if you got off now and went and then bought it step five or step six, you're going to make some money. Um, alternatively though, if you're going to buy, people go, well, why would I buy knowing it's going to drop? Well, if you bought an $850,000 property um, going back 12 months ago, you would have been on 2% interest rates. That same property now might be worth six fifty, but you're actually going to be on 6% interest rates. Well, there's a big difference between them. And looking at something the other day, your borrowing capacity drops as interest rates go up. So people that were on $83,000 could borrow $500,000 in, in um, April 2022. Now we're in February 23, and those people can borrow 382000 with the same $83,000 income. Of, of course, no other debts and things like that. Yeah. So uh, there's $128,000 difference between those two numbers. I'm scared for some people who keep waiting and waiting, waiting for properties prices to drop because they may not be able to borrow at that time. And so, you know, I've, I've mentioned this in a couple of podcasts that someone had mentioned to me once about, you know, when's a good time to buy, when you can yeah. afford it. Yeah. Well, you know, now's a good time to buy. You yep. know you've got a discount from the top. You know that you may not be able to borrow at the bottom because of the borrowing capacity. Now's a good time to step in. Yep. Fixed mortgages, stories, that, well, you know, they're all talking about this Scary, like mortgage cliff and stuff because there are have been some pretty big jumps, you know, what the repayment's going to be for some people. Yep. Are you feeling in the market, you know, uh, that people are getting nervous on that side? Like, are we feeling any effect of that already? Or people start to come it. to us and ask questions, say, look, I might be looking to sell if we're going to struggle in June or something. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we've got a lot of people talking about hitting the market, which means that there will be extra properties coming on that will also help to decrease prices, unfortunately, because first one to sell gets a price. The next ones I've got to match it to yeah. be the price because the value is take advantage of that very, very quickly. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the answer is that those fixed rates coming off is starting to fill everyone. And, and uh, you know, whether it be... Um, even my internal people in, in my staff and my team saying, hey, listen, what do you think about this, you know, and all the rest of it, um, to the people that I sit down on a daily basis out doing appraisals of their homes, and then they say, well, look, we were in no trouble at all, but now it's actually three times what we were paying. You know, there's a little bit of hurt there. Now, it's not tremendous hurt, but if it goes up another um, 1% or 2%, there's going to be a lot, and uh, they're making a choice now whether it's the right time or not. So, yeah, I think you'll you'll start to see a fair bit of that in the marketplace. You can feel it. Yeah. Sydney may not be feeling it, but I can tell you what the Central Coast is. Yeah. Do you feel also then investors, because I know like investors feel like they always try and pick the market, but I feel like there's a lot of investors sitting there on the sidelines and they're just waiting for that last little trigger to say this is it. Yeah. Again, get in first before they start chasing the prices back up as well. Yeah. Are investors on the sidelines, do you feel at the moment, like, oh, they're just holding off that last little bit? They have been, but uh, but I think they're there. Um, I think what they're looking at is just a justify reason. And, and a lot of them are now starting to look at interest rates as well and go, okay, well, there's a bit of comparison. Of course, everyone would want to buy at the bottom. Yeah. But if you're a really smart investor, you're buying now because you'll also buy at the bottom. Yeah. So you won't just consider just the one purchase, you'll consider probably two or three. Is the RBA doing a good job? Can we have another question? Yeah, I think they stuffed. I think they stuffed it, mate. To be honest with you, yeah. why you'd do an interest rate drop while the market was going absolutely booming, exactly, um, and uh, and keep going with interest rate drops? They just they they stuffed it. Yeah, and uh, and you know I'm not blaming them wholly and solely because there ha there has to be an increase. Yeah, there's no question. We spent a lot of money through COVID and all this. There's got to be things that actually yeah. come from that which we've got to be aware of. Yeah, um, but I think they could have um, given the interest rate increases and then waited and not waited for a month before they put the next one in. They wait until that actually takes a serious effect. Get a feel, yep. Now, I wouldn't say wait until a fixed term's up of one year, two years, three years, but I think they could have done one and every quarter to every six months they could have kept doing their rise but did it slower. Yeah. And I think they would have had a healthy economy that would have um, fought its way through. It would have not slowed it as quick, Yeah. but I think it wouldn't have been as catastrophic of what it, as what it's going to be if they keep doing it, uh, did it the way they've done it. They were talking about three or four rate rises this year. I, yeah. I Personally, I can't see that. I can see a couple. Yeah. Um, but uh, but there again, they surprise us at the worst times. 
So there's a rule I didn't understand. I only heard it yesterday at a event from uh, the Greens calling on the government to uh, take back the last interest rate, like to revoke it. Yeah, yeah. Is that, it's not going to happen. No, no one's ever called on that before, have no, they? No. So, no. Look, you know, again, I'm not an expert and yeah, that's not I'm my, my position. Always to, my gut feel is that it's yeah. not going to be. Look, they've announced it, they've put it in place and, and, and it'll happen. The banks jump on it really quickly, yeah. don't they? So yeah. uh, they've already got it in place. So well, I don't think it's any any um, issue. I think what they've got to do is look and go, well, what's the solid platform that we want to actually have for our, for our economy? And I know they're banking on a lot of uh, people coming into the country, but I, I think what they've got to do is they've got to actually look at what's there in the environment there at the moment. And, uh, you know, whether it be from the pensioners all the way through to, to the mega wealthy and just see how it's balanced and, and yeah. then what they can actually do. Yeah. It's an interesting topic. I do like to touch on, um, you know, GST versus interest rates. You know, mm-hmm. I think that'll be a topic that will, We'll probably see in the future. Oh, um, stay away from that. Just to um, don't even give them ideas of it. You know, the people who spend get penalised for spending instead yep. of everyone just a, a flat blanket. Yep. Property management. How are we going over that side? Because uh, in the run of COVID, as we know, there was no properties for rent. How we, how's it looking over that side now? Love property management. Yeah, there, look, there was a lot of properties. Um, uh, you know, coming in January, it was the most I'd seen for a very long period of time um, over the last couple of years. Um, but we have got an absolutely brilliant tenancy team. They're leased uh, over 50 properties uh, in January and they look like they're going to go over it again for um, February. So uh, so we're very excited about that. And uh, when you've got a good team that's got good processes in place and they check the people out thoroughly, you know, it's uh, it's certainly a nice place to be. So property management in a very, very good space at the moment. Yeah, terrific. Yeah. They are one of the best team in the world. Um, yep. And to finish up, community. How are you going out in the community, Darren? Well, with, you'd be um, able to tell me more. You look after the community, so I'm going to reverse the role. Oh. You know, I know, look, you know, from sporting perspective, uh, you know, I know um, Northern Districts uh, did their uh, cricket the other day. Yeah. The Pink Stumps. The weekend, yeah. That went uh, um, really, really good. Um, I know that um, Camel Football's launched, and uh, so the soccer clubs uh, got up and running with their trials, and we we're major sponsors of them. Um, I know that, um, you know, Camel, uh, Waller are a point fizzy. Um, which is based at Camel, has now opened a shop at Narara. Um, uh, well, I say a shop, but uh, a uh, you know an educational facility for yeah, them, wow. and and that's really really good. So that's going really well. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know I've seen some good things within the community, but you've been involved in Swamp. You've been involved in the Lighthouse Project. You've been involved with um, yeah, yeah, South Lake, South Lake Christine. And yep. Stuff. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, just quickly look the Lighthouse. I was just had a meeting with them there. There's um, their a management team looks like they're coming in. Um, reflections, uh, they run like uh, caravan parks and everything else. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to turn into a caravan park. They're just like a management and they're actually a government management system. They look yep. after um, all the reserves. So that's going to be interesting to what they can bring any new ideas out to the lighthouse and stuff. Yep. You'll probably see more festivals, I'm guessing, all that type of thing. That was so, there's been so many good ones that people yeah. are raving about too. Yeah, it's perfect location, good yep. size. Uh, cheese and wine festivals, which I know you'd love, is heading out there and stuff in the oh, future and stuff. Like the odd cheese, yeah, like odd the odd wise. And um, so, and then you got who are, oh, Swamp, amazing group, community group. Um, yeah, they do great things. They work with a lot of uh, disadvantaged groups out there. Um, all different from like handicapped and kids who are probably doing a little bit tough out there. It gives them that little bit of guidance, great mentorship out there, yep. and to get their minds off things. Is there is there any way? Look, I know they do. Um, they have produce of food and things yep. like that. Is there any way you could get some of that over the Southern Lakes? Yeah, so they support a lot of projects like that down there already. Yeah, yeah awesome. So all excess goes to somewhere else. Yeah, it's um, so good. and it does become like full circle, like all these little groups you meet. Yep. can maybe help each other and that type of thing. But, yeah, so any excess, yeah, uh, South Lakes always is open to it. Um, Christine at South Lakes, incredible person. She got nominated or in the nominations for Australian of the Year yeah, it's crazy. last year. And she's doing phenomenal stuff again. She's trying to expand at the moment. She's asked yep. us for some help with uh, maybe a commercial site, so we'll see what we can do on that side. Yep. But, again, it's just nice to be in a position where um, these groups, like, uh, nothing to do with real estate, but just with the agents out there talking to them, yep. they become an asset and a trust factor for them. And um, yeah, they can pick our brains again, real estate as well, but everything yep. else, like, cause we do marketing we do, we've got lots of different people. We have lots of contacts so we can take in new people to their groups and everything else to help them expand. So, so she loved food though, didn't she? She, like, yeah. she, is she home cooked meals? 
Yeah, so this one's a big one. This is the new one uh, for this year to make it easier for everyone to help. So instead of us going up to do a big cook up, which they still do, yep. um, they're going to start shouting out and like for all the community. So we'll help spread the word. If you make excess like spaghetti, put it in a container, freeze it, yep. and uh, send it down to them. Or they can probably look at, we're going to look at dropping it off maybe into the office on a particular day in the morning. Yep. So I've got the freezer packs ready and we'll drop them straight off to the community groups. Um, they're setting up one right now at Bado Bay. Okay, so, so we've got a, we'll put a link below um, um, Robert Hilly, you know, at wiseburyheritage.com.au and then yeah. people can email you or, or D, give you yeah. a, a phone call or whatever and you can coordinate that for them. So that's good. Yeah, great idea. And um, yeah, and that makes a huge difference. I think at Bado Bay, they're working with up to 150 homeless people yeah. in that area. So yeah, you, that's amazing. I always say like, you don't see, you know, you look yeah. around and stuff, but they're good at, what they do on the on the homeless lot, yeah. The people who are homeless, yeah. they they um yeah they get embarrassed by their position and everything else, so they try and stay, not like Sydney where they are straight on the street and stuff. Yeah. So Central Coast is a bit different, but yeah, look and again every little bit. I think that project's probably one of the best projects because the kids can get involved in everything else to say, hey, mum, can we cook up a meal for yeah. these lovely people and stuff? So yeah, well, that'll be a big one. So and again, big thanks to Wisebury, like mate, the um always grateful for everything we do to help them so yeah uh, and and mate appreciate with the time that you put in as well it's really really great so um thank you for that yeah it's good fun um now they're, they're also each of those groups that we name whether it be a sporting club whether it be a charity or organization or whatever they're always after volunteers and look there you know some people are coming out the other side of covid and they're going i just don't know where my life's heading or i don't know what about direction or whatever but giving time in whether it be a charity organization or a sporting group or whatever the case may be is, is one of the most beneficial things that we can do um and uh, we'd encourage people to do it so if you've got any questions follow the link below and and touch base with rob he'll put you into with a, a group that might um, be suited to you um, which could be um, whether it be sporting um, you know and cooking a barbecue or whether it be going and uh, weeding out at a lighthouse or whatever it might be it's all part and parcel of just joining a group and you know like-minded people get there they have a lot of fun i think it's a good thing that we can pass forward yeah it's terrific um yeah i totally endorse it i'll lose half my weekends to it now for some of the people <laughs> i go out with but um the kids get involved with it as well now the family yeah. and stuff and um yeah, look, it really is very humbling and it's a great way to, um, yeah, just connect with other people, mate. It's real stuff. So yeah. love it. And I also say if, if someone in life is having a little bit of troubles, it's a great way when you focus outward on someone else, it's a great way to lose the negative focus that you've got internally on yourself. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Um, all right, mate, finishing. Any words like um, for anyone out there buying or selling in this tough market or interesting market, what kind of advice have you got to leave us with? Not probably much. <laughs> <laughs> you you cover everything, don't you? <laughs> no, look, the, the truth is if you're, a, if you're a buyer out there at the moment, it, you know, there's good selection and there's some great properties and, and purchases out there. Um, find something that's suitable for yourself. Don't regret later that you didn't spend that extra $10,000 getting the exact home that you wanted rather than the one down the street that you think second best. Um, that's probably the, the best advice from uh, a young person's perspective, start to look now at investing at property, um, and start looking at, you know, getting rid of some of your debts that's there after pay, zip pays, you know, uh, Foxtel dishes that you don't need or whatever the case may be, get rid of some of that stuff and start to clean up, uh, where you're at, start to get a savings pattern in order to try to save, um, you know, your wealth's going to be created by buying now. And as the market rises in five to seven years time, taking advantage of that. And so a very, very good time. I don't say don't go overseas and do all that stuff. If you want to do it, do it. But also take advantage of uh, getting into a home early where you've got no dependents or you've got no problems like that. Now, if you have got dependents, then you've just got to work out a way that you're going to make that happen, but start to save little bit by little bit. Great book by Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Definitely worth reading for anybody that's out there that wants to um, start the real estate journey and think a little bit differently. Yeah. So if you're younger, always recommend stay at home as long as possible. Well, no, because your parents might drive you nuts and, and you might be driving your parents nuts. <laughs> yep. but, uh, but what I would say is, um, you know, if you can do that, stay there and save and get a pattern going. I think you get to the end of, say, three to five years where you could have been saving and then you find out that you've just been spending it on everything all weekend. You're probably better to tuck that aside and use it and clean it up yourself. Excellent, mate. Why the real estate cross the road? I don't know, mate. Why? You heard a penny drop on the other side. <laughs> it's a cleaner one than my last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Robert. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Darren. Always a pleasure. Thanks, mate. Cheers.